MHF for you, Grade 12 Functions, Section 1.4. Today we're going to discuss sketching graphs of functions. So first of all, let's just look at some graphs we have right here. Um, we have the graph, and we have the equation of the function. And so I want you to think about what you notice uh, in these in the changes to the parent function you see here, right? So for example, every single graph here undergoes a horizontal translation, right, one unit, and then undergoes a horizontal stretch by a factor of uh, 1 over 0.5 units, and then it undergoes a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2 units, and then it's translated up 3 units. Okay, so just think about those changes that it's undergoing. Um, and we're going to talk more about how, you know, the order in which these changes are happening in the function and how it affects the new function. Okay, so we can use transformations to help us describe the characteristics of the transformed function. So here's an example, um, and there's actually two ways to look at this. The first one being looking at the formula, and we need to understand first what each little piece does um, of the general function, what the changes it gives you. And you can actually apply that to this formula right here to give you the, trans the, the coordinates of the transformed function. And the second way you can find out the coordinates of the transformed function is by applying the horizontal and vertical translations in order. Okay, so first let's look at this formula we get here. x over k plus d comma ay plus c. So in this case, a is telling you your vertical stretch or compression. k is telling you your horizontal stretch or compression. It's important over here for k, you're always dealing with 1 over k. Um, as your compression or stretch factor. x is your x value, as we know we put in. d is your horizontal um, translation value, and c is your vertical translation value. Okay, so in this case, we have an example. y is equal to 3 root x minus 2. So this function undergoes a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 and a, horizontal, and a vertical translation, sorry, by uh, you know, 2 units down. So in this case, the a value is 3, and the c value is negative 2. So now we have like a nice summary of uh, the transformations on the function and what each part means. So the value of a determines whether there's a vertical stretch or compression or reflection in the x-axis. So when the absolute value of a is less than 1, the graph is um, reflected in the x-axis. When the value of absolute value of a is greater than 1, the a value of the function is stretched vertically by the factor of absolute value of a, and when a is between 0 and 1, then the graph is compressed vertically by the factor um, absolute value a. The value of k determines whether there is a horizontal stretch or compression or reflection in the y-axis. So when the absolute value of k is greater than 1, then the graph is compressed horizontally by the factor of 1 over k. So as, as I was mentioning before, whenever you're dealing with k, or the horizontal stretch or compression factor, you have to always use 1 over the absolute value of that factor. When k is between 0 and 1, the graph is stretched horizontally by the factor of 1 over absolute value of k. And when k is less than 0, the graph is also reflected in the y-axis. The value of d determines whether there's a horizontal uh, translation. So when d is greater than 0, the graph is translated to the right. And when d is less than 0, the graph is translated to the left. The value of c determines whether there's a vertical translation. So if c is greater than 0, the graph is translated up. And when c is less than 0, the graph is translated down. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, might be a lot to just, you know, understand when you first see it, but I believe you should be familiar with it from grade 11 functions as well. Um, and so with that, we'll go into some examples. State the transformations defined by each equation in the order they would be applied to y is equal to f of x. So for part a, we have y is equal to f of x minus 1. So this is a vertical translation one unit down. For part b, we have y is equal to f of 2 times x minus 1. So first of all, we look at the horizontal compression occurring. Um, which is a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over 2. We know to use the value 1 over 2 because whenever you're with horizontal stretches or compressions, it's always 1 over the value that gives you the stretch or compression. So in this case, it's 1 over 2. Um, then we have a horizontal translation, right 1 unit. The way I know it's going right 1 unit is because I'm looking for the value of x that will give me, that will make my entire um, f of x go to 0. And so in this case, if I put an x equal to 1, then it, the, the entire thing equals 0. And as such, I know that f of x is moving right one unit. Okay, so let me go to example um, part f. And we have y is equal to 1 over 2 times f of 1 over times x minus 5. Um, all of that plus 6. 
So the first thing we're looking at here is a vertical compression by a factor of 1 over 2. Okay, so we see that one in front of vf, we know that's 1 over 2. Then we have a vertical translation of 6 units. Okay. Then we move to the horizontal um, transformations happening here. So horizontal stretch by a factor of 4. All right, so here we know that's a factor of 1 divided by 1 over 4. So that's how we know it's by a factor of 4. And then lastly, we have a horizontal, horizontal, stretch, uh, horizontal translation, 5 <laughs> units to the right. So again, I put in my x is equal to 5, and that's how I know it's a translation right 5 units. So one last important thing to remember for horizontal um, stretches or compression is that you need to first of all factor out any value. So let's say I had a function with, let's just say I had um, y is equal to 1 over 2 f of 2x plus 2. Well, the first thing I need to do here is factor this out. So I need to get to 1 over 2 f of 2 times x plus 1. And the reason why I need to do that is so I can properly apply my horizontal stretches um, and compressions and translate. To identify the appropriate values for a, k, c, and d to describe each set of transformations below. So first of all, we have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2, a vertical stretch 3 units up, and a reflection in the x-axis. So the horizontal stretch by a factor of 2 tells us that our k value needs to be um, changed. So with our k value, remember we're dealing with 1 over k always. So in this case, when there's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2, that means k is equal to 1 over 2. Then we move to our vertical translation up 3 units, and that tells us that our, that our c value needs to change. So in this case, if it's going up 3 units, c is equal to positive 3. Then we talk lastly about our reflection in the x-axis. So reflection in the x-axis means that there was a vertical reflection, therefore a is changed. So since there's a vertical reflection, a then is equal to negative 1. And since there's no change in d, or the, or the horizontal translation, d stays equal to 0. Okay. Then for part b, we have a is equal to 3. So you have to remember, um, a is the vertical stretch or compression occurring. And you can compare the new function we have with the parent function, um, and you can see that there is a change happening in the height of the new function compared to the old function. So that's how we know that there's a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. Then we have k is equal to 1 over 2, um, meaning that there's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2 again. d is equal to 0, so there's no horizontal translations occurring, and c is equal to negative 2, meaning that the, the entire function is brought down 2 units. Okay, so then we have the point 2, comma 3 is on the graph of y equals f of x. Determine the corresponding coordinates of this point on the graph of y is equal to negative 2 times f times f of 2 times x plus 5, the entire thing minus 4. So there's two ways you can do this, uh, one being you use the formula here, or you apply first all the vertical transformations together, then the horizontal transformations together. So here we have, you're using a formula, we have x comma y is equal to x over k plus d comma ay plus c, so we extract our values here, a is equal to negative 2, k is equal to 2, d is equal to negative 5, and c is equal to negative 4, and then we're putting them through the formula, and now we have our final points, negative 4 comma negative 10. Okay, and then question 11. So Greg thinks that the graphs of y is equal to 5x squared minus 3 and y is equal to 5 times x squared minus 3 are the same. Explain why he's incorrect. Okay, so all we're going to do here is we're going to first of all just um, expand out the initial equation of the graph we have here, which is what we get. We get 5x squared minus 15, and then right away we see that this is not equal to the um, graph he thought it was equal to, which is y is equal to 5x squared minus 3. So this is a common mistake that people might make, and it's important to identify, um, because you need to remember to multiply out your change, first of all, looking at it algebraically, but then also graphically now you can think of it, right? And you can see that, well, the graphs would not be equal, because if, if I'm applying a vertical, in this case, you know, multiplying it by 5, means that I'm applying a vertical transformation, right? I'm applying a vertical stretch to this um, original function, and that vertical stretch will apply to all the points included within the brackets in this case. So, we, yeah, so that's how you know that he's incorrect. Okay, so I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about um, the rules for transformations of functions. Um, this summary right here really helps you kind of break it down into parts and understand what each little part of the equation does when you're dealing with transformation. And as always, thank you for watching. 
Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us on the forum. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.